After the success of the Stick of Truth, Matt Stone, Trey Parker, and Ubisoft have invited you to come on down to South Park once more with their newest installment of everyone's favorite game franchise, Full of Farts. Hi, I'm Jacob with The Leaderboard, and we're here to tell you 107 facts about South Park The Fractured Butthole. And before we get started, make sure to subscribe and click the bell icon to become part of our notification squad. <laughs> South Park's creators, Matt Stone and Trey Parker, said they learned so much from making the Stick of Truth that they felt they could make an even better game, and this motivated them to go and make The Fractured Butthole. The Fractured Butthole is the sequel to The Stick of Truth and picks up where The Stick of Truth left off. In fact, the very next day after. The story this time is that the kids have been playing superheroes, but have gotten into a big fight about their franchise and are now in the Civil War phase of their superhero plot. Matt and Trey said their goal was to recreate that feeling of being a kid when you did things like put your underwear outside your pants and run around trying to save the town while pretending to be a superhero, implying that I don't still do that as an adult. The game references phases for their superheroes, which spoofs the phases that Marvel uses to structure and market their cinematic universe, but I don't think we'll ever see a Marvel movie with this caliber of fart jokes. Matt and Trey wanted to get into the idea of who you are in South Park and allow you as a player to define who you are. In the last game, you were cool because you rose to basically become king, but in this game, the kids have switched what they're playing, so you're back to just being a regular old douchebag again. While I can't really relate to the new kid in Stick of Truth, I can relate a whole lot to the being a lowly douchebag part. The creators also wanted to use the kids changing genre and therefore your social standing to poke fun at the RPG convention of going back to being weak in the sequel even after you became so strong in the last game. Parker said that they needed to give the character the emotional motivation that every superhero has to go and fight crime. For your character, that's the emotional trauma of catching your parents having sex in the middle of the night, which to be fair would be much more traumatized than a bat phobia. Oh yeah, I guess Bruce did also have that whole murdered parents thing. But whatever, details. Stone explained that the appeal of the game is that it allows the audience to experience the town of South Park in a way that wouldn't be possible in the linear narrative of a TV show. The game was originally going to be titled The Butthole of Time, but retailers wouldn't put that title on a shelf. The Fractured Butthole was a play on words that Stone and Parker offered as a compromise so that no shop customers had to be confronted with buttholes if they didn't want to be. Ubisoft knew that the success of the Stick of Truth came from the authentic authenticity of the South Park experience, and so giving gamers that authentic experience this time around was their goal from day one. While there have been a few episodes about the Coon and Friends superhero personas, they were limited to the main characters, Cartman as the Coon, Kenny as Mysterion, and all of the others. For the Fractured Butthole, however, the cast of heroes was expanded to include kids like Scott, aka Captain Diabetes, Dr. Timmy, and Jimmy as Fast Pass. Parker and Stone are both gamers, and had a very hands-on approach to the development of the Fractured Butthole. They brought the Ubisoft team into their earliest meetings when conceptualizing the game. While conceptualizing the game, Parker and Stone knew early on that they wanted it to be about superheroes, and that they wanted you to play as the same kid from the last game, because why not? Alter egos go a long way. According to the game developers, Parker is a hardcore RPG gamer and plays a lot of tabletop games. This meant it was easy for the developers and Parker to come up with a common shorthand while developing combat systems and other gameplay mechanics. Stone is more of an action gamer who doesn't want to be held back from cool experiences. This contrast to Parker helped the developers create a game that that they think appeals to both hardcore and casual players. Unlike the Stick of Truth, which went through multiple publishers, the Fractured Butthole worked with Ubisoft from start to finish, meaning that the game was created with a consistent vision and team, and that Parker and Stone's vision didn't have to be censored in any way. Game director Jason Schroeder said that when he started working on the game, he had to fight his impulses as a fan. When he got scripts in, he initially didn't want to read them and get spoilers, but he obviously had to because he was working on the game. When developing the Fractured Butthole, Parker said that he watched a streamer play Stick of Truth to see if fan play the game and react in real time. Developers said that the camera was a challenge to figure out because South Park is shot like a camera over construction paper and the game engine had to be able to match this when zooming out. While it may look simple, the hand-drawn slash digital construction paper look can actually make the animation process more complex than your usual AAA game with high-end graphics. Even the trees in South Park each have an individual hand-drawn look. Full assets from South Park, characters, backgrounds, etc. were sent to the developers so that they could work fast like the show does and get the best joke in place. In most games, the character looks and moves like a skeleton, but for the fractured butthole, the developers moved the characters more like puppets to better replicate the feel of the show. It used the process of switching parts to create the illusion of movement as opposed to actual movement. As a show, South Park obviously could not be done without the work of their huge team of in-house animators. Bringing them on to work with the game engine was essential to Ubisoft so that they could create an authentic South Park experience. At first, the instinct of the animators was to make the South Park characters move as much as possible with all body parts like a 
person does. They quickly realize that's not how South Park works, and the look of the show lies in how so much comedy comes from so little movement. A detail you might have missed in the South Park TV show is when the characters are talking to each other, a lot of the time they actually face the camera, not each other. The development team realized that they had to do the same thing during game combat and have the characters in conflict face the camera in order to create the same look. When developing the combat, Parker wanted to keep the turn-based element of combat from the Stick of Truth because turn-based combat makes it much easier to incorporate story elements and it also makes it easier to integrate comedic timing into every part of the gameplay. And don't worry, you don't fight alone. You're also joined by characters from the show, all of whom have their own unique sets of powers in what developers would categorize as a tactical RPG. There are differences in developing the show and the game. Parker and Stone turn around an episode of South Park in six days, which is insane by the way, but of course a game can't be made in that time, so the process had to be elongated. That said, the developers strove to make it possible for Parker to try things out in his usual improvisational fashion during development. The South Park art department from the show wanted to recreate the fun from the last game of dressing up your character, so the game provides a large number of concepts allowing you to dress your character as good or as terrible as you want. Parker said it was important for them to have a balance between complexity so that the game was fun and engaging to play, and simplicity so that it still felt like South Park. They didn't want a game that was like a movie where you press X a lot. The game developers felt that building your own South Park superhero identity and recognizing yourself in the game was very important, so they deliberately made sure that your character's appearance and what they wear had nothing to do with your abilities, unlike most other RPGs. The game has three difficulty settings, the highest of which is Mastermind. The game developers feel that Mastermind is the best place to see the depth of the RPG mechanics on display. 2013's The Stick of Truth was censored in both Australia and Germany due to its controversial content. However, the fractured butthole was not adjusted in any way for the Australian release, meaning that Australians were able to experience the game's total ass control farting mechanic just as the creators intended. Matt Stone has said that he believes that the interactivity of the games makes people more uncomfortable with edgy content than they would be in a linear medium like TV. He pointed out that content that was censored from the last game, The Stick of Truth, would have aired on TV without issue. South Park The Fractured Butthole was given an M rating by the ESRB, which isn't a surprise, but the rating's description that justify their choice is pretty entertaining. It explains the rating is due to scenes that include blood and gore, mature humor, strong language, urinating and defecating, a character performing a lap dance while emitting flatulence, a towel character performing obscured sex, all in a cartoony and over-the-top manner. Honestly, the over-the-top part seems just kind of redundant to me. With farts being such a prominent feature in the game, the developers gave fans the opportunity to submit fart sounds via an online contest called I Am The Fart, all for the chance to have their farts featured in game. The winner was chosen by popular vote. Democracy in action. The game suffered two delays during development, once from December 2016 to March 2017, and then once again to October of 2017. Game director Jason Schroeder said that a big reason the game took so long to make was an obvious one, good comedy. He said delays were more about polishing the content they had so that they didn't have to compromise on any jokes. The script for The Fractured Butthole was a massive 360 pages, which for reference is the length of two feature films. It's also twice the length of their first game, The Stick of Truth. The new gameplay mechanics may seem fun now, but it added a lot of challenges to the writing process. This coupled with an extended script was another reason for the multiple delays in the release of The Fractured Butthole. One of the challenges in development was the back and forth between Ubisoft and the South Park production offices, with Ubisoft waiting on scripts while South Park's offices waited to see gameplay. Parker said that he felt the best parts of the game are those where the gameplay is the joke rather than just putting jokes in with gameplay or vice versa. Even if the game was delayed, you can't accuse Trey Parker of not caring. During development of The Stick of Truth, he had to have emergency gallbladder surgery and following the operation, he convinced his doctor to let him leave the hospital temporarily to get the dialogue laid down. On his way back to the hospital, he said, I just want this game to be sweet. Well, let me tell ya, that story sure is. One mistake that Stone felt they made with The Stick of Truth was that they set out to make Skyrim when they should have been making a more linear game. This time around, they were keen on avoiding this problem during development. Because of the fast turnaround for an episode of South Park, they can satirize things that happen just days before the episode airs. That wasn't quite possible with The Fractured Butthole, although they did manage to get jokes in about events that happened two or three months before release, which is pretty impressive for a video game timeline. Lead narrative designer Jolie Menzel said that letting Stone and Parker play early builds of the game was key to helping them realize their vision and articulate it to the team at Ubisoft. South Park's game engine, Snowdrop, is the same game engine that powers The Division, but that's probably where the similarities between the games end. Oh, other than Snow, both, both games have that. While the game developers may have been working with cutting-edge software, Menzel said Stone and Parker wrote their scripts on Movie Magic Screenwriter, an ancient screenwriting program. Her guess is that they started using it when they worked together in college and just never stopped. The script for The Fractured Butthole was written by Stone and Parker like a traditional movie script, with the stage directions between dialogue being the action that you 
Ubisoft's team would translate into gameplay. Ubisoft said that they saw themselves as the straight man in the process of collaborating with Stone and Parker, saying that they handled the punchlines while it was Ubisoft's job to set up the shot so they could slam it in. Game director Jason Schroeder said it was his job to tell Stone and Parker no when necessary. They wanted someone who could get things done, not someone who would be a pleaser. A lot of the jokes about the nature of video games came from the times that Stone and Parker would find a creative choice or change impossible because of the constraints of the video game medium. When they found that they weren't allowed or able to do something, their response was to make fun of it, leading to even more comedy. Schroeder said that he could always tell when Parker was going to ask him to make a last minute change because he would always start the call with, how much is it gonna bum you out if, insert unreasonable demand here. I mean, at least he's nice about it. Saturday Night Live alum Bill Hader was involved in the game, but not quite in the way you would expect. He's a frequent collaborator on the TV show, and when the 20th season of South Park began to air while the game was still being developed, Jason Schroeder joked that Bill Hader was the muscle making sure that Stone and Parker didn't take too much time away from working on the TV show to work on the game. Most games have a system in their animation for their character movement that generates in-between poses when they move from point A to point B. Ubisoft found that they could do that for South Park, and while it didn't look bad, it just didn't look like South Park. So they ended up animating everything by hand rather than using a physics system. South Park The Fractured But Whole is available on Xbox One, PS4, and also PC. That means that some of the controls had to be adapted. The example given by developers was a lap dancing sequence in the game. It was originally envisioned with an analog control, but for PC, it had to be adapted to keyboard. There's a lot of jokes hidden deep in the game, along with jokes that players can create for themselves. Ubisoft's playtesting labs around the world were an essential resource for these, making sure that players were able to find the hidden jokes and skits and have as much fun as possible. While references and callbacks are fun for committed fans of the show, it was important to Stone and Parker that the game didn't put them in unnecessarily. Parker would always ask if there was a good reason that a reference was being made. Members of the Ubisoft San Francisco team had also worked on another popular game with absurd action, No More Heroes 2. The Fractured But Holes game director, Jason Schroeder, also worked on Marvel Ultimate Alliance and used his experience working on a superhero property in the past to help him with this project, but he also kept in mind the important difference that the South Park characters are just kids playing pretend. Jolie Menzel was a comic book major in college and has a BFA in sequential arts, so she was also an expert on the superhero subject matter of the game. During the development of The Stick of Truth, the music was pulled directly from the show, but for The Fractured But Whole, the lead audio designer, Nicholas Bonardi, worked with longtime South Park composer Jamie Dunlap to create a more original sound. The game's score pays homage to iconic superhero films in very specific ways. For example, the music accompaniments for Mysterion and the Coon are heavily influenced by the score of Christopher Nolan's Batman films, while the group antics of Coon and Friends are accompanied by more Avengers-style music. The game's music isn't just limited to superhero films. When the player encounters the Vamp Kids, we're treated to a soundtrack reminiscent of Castlevania and the Konami rock sound. The game score was handled mostly by Dunlap, but sound effects were entirely done by Ubisoft. They were given access to the show's iconic sounds, from doors to the school bell to vocal cat meows. One sound effect that had to be recorded from scratch was fart sounds, with Ubisoft using a huge variety of instruments and mixing techniques to create a menagerie of fart options. As they worked on it, all fart sounds were sent to Stone and Parker for approval, and they ended up with a library of over 100 fart sounds to use in the game. Bonardi said his favorite superhero scores growing up were the soundtracks for the old Christopher Reeve Superman movies and Danny Elfman scores, but there was a limit to how much those influences could be brought to the game, because you can only Elfman so hard. In terms of contemporary superhero movies, Schroeder says that he most admires what's being done with the Captain America franchise. Can you see any Cap influences creeping into the game? Lucas Walker, a senior animator on South Park who moved over to Ubisoft to help with the launch of the game, said that his favorite South Park episode to work on was Pandemic, because despite the show's six-day production schedule, they were able to perform the technical feat of integrating a live-action hamster into the animated episode. The fractured butthole is longer than the stick of truth because Trey wrote a longer experience, meaning it's not just for the sake of dragging out playtime for gamers. When developing comedy moments for gameplay, like for puzzles or combat, the key word the developers kept in mind was unexpected, because they wanted to make an experience that feels like a normal puzzle, but then surprises you and makes you laugh. One of the most famous examples of the kids playing heroes in the show is the episode Good Times with Weapons. It depicts the kids in full-blown anime while periodically revealing that they're just playing pretend. The developers cite that episode as an example of the kind of comedy they wanted in the game. To promote the game, South Park and Ubisoft created the Nauseulous Rift, a riff on the Oculus Rift. The Nauseulous Rift is a device that creates an immersive experience by filling your nose with a fart odor every time your character lets one loose in the game. Ubisoft actually constructed the device and gave it to convention attendees. Fortunately, it's not currently available in stores. Unless you're into that sort of thing, in which case you're probably disappointed. True to the spirit of the show, a mini game is included that allows you to poop in every home in South Park. It's not just the push of a button either, it's a full rhythm game reminiscent of a Guitar Hero or Dance Dance Revolution that gets more challenging depending on which toilet you try to... conquer? 
sure. As a reminder that kids are playing a game within a game, if you're battling on the street, all characters will periodically have to get out of the way of traffic and wait for it to pass while adults berate you for playing in the street. There are three types of superheroes you can play in the game. Brutalist, like The Thing, Blaster, like Cyclops, or Speedster, like The Flash. You can eventually mix and match powers from over a dozen different classes. The two additions to combat were the use of space and the use of time. Space means unlike the Stick of Truth, characters are no longer restricted to one position in combat. You can move into tactical positions to attack your enemies, move behind cover, push and pull enemies, etc., but be careful because they can do the same to you. New Kid's magical butthole in the first game was legendary, and that hasn't changed. Stone and Parker wanted to continue this, uh, memorable story element, so your character's farts are now so powerful you can rearrange the fabric of time, which in combat means you can rearrange the turn order. Sixth graders are the most feared enemy in the world of South Park. Even mobsters fear them, because sixth graders are willing to do literally anything to get what they want and have no scruples. The game asks you to choose between one of two sides in its civil war, the Freedom Pals led by Mysterion, aka Kenny, or the Coon and Friends led by the Coon, aka Cartman. The adults in the Fractured Butthole are far more aware of the kids than they are in the Stick of Truth when they were pretty oblivious to the children's actions. The adults can also be harmed much more by the kids this time around, with many more real attacks, like turrets that are created by the kids and directed at adults. Even member berries make an appearance in the game. There are 14 different pots of them hidden around the town of South Park, and don't forget, they're an essential crafting ingredient for your time fart attack. Another collectible you can search around for is the 40 pieces of artwork hidden around the town, all of which feature Tweak and Craig in the Japanese yaoi art style. Craig's dad will give you money for every piece of artwork you find, and if you want a hint, once you unlock the Sandblaster ability, you can find a map of all the locations in Bebe's Bay basement. Happy hunting. While South Park has a history of disdain for authority, the creators don't look kindly on cheating in their video games. Early in the game, you need a password from Cartman's diary to get into his basement, but if you type it in without reading said diary, a window containing Cartman dressed as Bill Belichick will pop up and tell you not to cheat. A key gameplay difference between the Stick of Truth and the Fractured Butthole is that the turn-based strategy in the Stick of Truth was more of a classic retro RPG turn-based combat system, whereas the Fractured Butthole incorporates a grid system, reminiscent of Final Fantasy Tactics and Fire Emblem. Choosing your team isn't just about a balance of power. You also get to see characters' attitudes towards each other on full display. Put Wendy on a team with Stan and she's full of compliments, but put her on a team with Cartman and she treats him with the contempt she's had for him throughout the show's run. There was a prequel episode to The Fractured Butthole released on Comedy Central, appropriately titled Franchise Prequel. The story showed Professor Chaos, aka Butters, using an army of trolls to spread fake news about the superhero kids, which eventually leads to their split. And Mark Zuckerberg is somehow involved because it's the internet. The developers wanted Cartman's abilities in the game to reflect his obvious self delusion so it shows him exaggerating his physical power while we see his clear physical weakness and incompetence in real life. Most character creation systems in games only give you the option to be a boy or a girl, even in a day and age when many feel that these definitions don't express their true identity. The Fractured Butthole sets itself apart by allowing you to build a very specific gender identity via a detailed questionnaire that you fill out for the school counselor, Mr. Mackey. Like the RPGs that inspired it, the game lets players inflict or suffer from typical status ailments such as burned or chilled, however, you can also inflict something more specific to the world of South Park, such as grossed out, which characters typically suffer from after being hit by bodily fluids or gases. Unlike the Stick of Truth, the Fractured Butthole's battles are impacted by the place you start them. Ever wanted to slam Randy Marsh into the side of his car? Of course you have! Start a fight with him near it and you can! The game doesn't just spoof and give nods to superhero movies, but superhero games as well. The Fractured Butthole uses a detective mode to help the player examine their environment, a feature lifted directly from the popular Batman Arkham series. Your character sheet stats in South Park are mostly self-explanatory. Brawn is strength, dexterity affects your ranged attacks, but your magical abilities, instead of calling the stat mana or magica like most games, the Fractured Butthole calls the stat that measures your inner magical and special abilities spunk. Can't say I'm surprised in the slightest, really takes balls for them to change that. Kenny's inability to permanently die is perhaps South Park's most famous running gag. It's now re purpose for Kenny's superhero alter ego, Mysterion, whose powers are that he can never die. Need a little extra help in the game? Special editions of the game, including the collector's edition, add a Towley feature, in which the popular character Towley will pop up at key moments in the game and advise you about your next steps. Fancy yourself a chef? This game allows you to use your farts to light a stove, which is a fun easter egg with a practical application. Just don't try this at home, please. In re don't do it in real life, this is a bad idea. One of the villains you encounter in the game is Mitch Connor, who challenges you to decipher his riddles, and he looks an awful lot like Cartman's left hand. 
The kids' ultimate attacks used in battle are clearly a shout out to Final Fantasy summons, as they allow a player to use visually insane powers to rain destruction on their enemies. Cartman, aka the Coon's attack, however, isn't about fire or lightning. Instead, we see him on magazine covers and being interviewed like a star, reflecting his deluded dream of creating a superhero franchise and getting rich. The game doesn't just try to fill every moment with snark or satire, it makes time for character moments too. At the core of the game, Stan is trying to deal with his dad's alcoholism, Craig is working through issues with his ex-boyfriend, and Kyle is pushing away his annoying cousin when he should be connecting with his family. South Park isn't generally known as being a show that painstakingly adheres to canon the way other fictional universes do, as they prefer to focus on making the joke work. However, there were ways that more recent developments in the show impacted the fractured butthole story. Jolie Menzel had a physical map of South Park which she updated every week to match developments in the show. PC Principal, a key character from season 19, plays a prominent role in the fractured butthole. There was speculation that he may have been killed off, but Stone and Parker kept getting more jokes out of him, so he was brought back for the game. The impact of gentrification on South Park reflected in the game too, with the continued presence of Soto Sopa, a shopping district that was built around Kenny's house. God, that kid really just can't catch a break. Want to express your inner beer snob while you play the game? Don't worry, you'll be able to drop into Crunchy's bar turned microbrewery in the game map. There's a selection of 12 buddies you can choose from in the fractured butthole to build your party for battle, which is double the number that was available to you in the Stick of Truth. Most of the superpowers that the kids have are things they've invented in their imagination for the game they're playing, but a few of the kids have genuine superpowers which are revealed within the game's narrative. There are times when what happens in South Park might be seen as unfair and you have the rug pulled out from under you during gameplay, but the developers think that that doesn't matter as long as it's funny. And there you have it. Once again, I'm Jacob, and thanks for watching 107 Facts About South Park The Fractured Butthole. Have you played it yet? What's your favorite part? Comment below and let us know. Don't forget to click the bell icon to become part of our notification squad, and if you like getting more from your games, subscribe to the leaderboard. Your home for video game facts.